Well, look, it, it certainly sounds like uh, a Russian pilot was, uh, was horsing around and deliberately trying to uh, destroy what they're, they're saying was a, a U.S. MQ-9 drone uh, over, the, uh, over the Baltics, over the Black Sea, rather. Uh, and so this is, this is a provocation. Uh, it's probably something of a test. Uh, the Russians, of course, don't like the fact that we're flying, admittedly, in international waters there, uh, and they're uh, expressing their displeasure. Uh, so it, it, it's pretty obvious why they're doing it. It's, it's clearly a, an irresponsible act, nevertheless. Uh, and so we'll, we'll see how it develops. Yeah, so the, the news reports are an MQ-9. Uh, that's a, 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 probably an MQ-9 Reaper. I'm not, not sure exactly the, the model, uh, but these are, frankly, some of very widespread, widely used, uh, let's just call them trucks that can carry any number of payloads. Uh, they've been used in the war on terrorism to, for, for hellfires, but also for uh, uh, ISR uh, 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 intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Uh, to, to surveil and spy. But again, these are essentially uh, versatile UAV trucks, and you can put all number of things uh, on them. But it's a pretty common, uh, pretty common drone. Well, uh, unfortunately, the Russians kind of think uh, of the Black Sea as their, their own lake. Uh, uh, legally speaking, it is international waters. Uh, they don't really like that fact, uh, but it, it certainly, from an international law perspective, uh, insulates the United States from any kind of allegation that we were uh, into Russian uh, airspace or something like that. Well, there's been quite a lot of uh, drone and counter drone activity in and around Ukraine, just absolutely tons of it. Uh, and it's really been, I would say, one of the most widespread uh, conflicts with not merely UAV, but counter UAV activity. And so it's, it's really advanced the activity, but continued the activity we've seen in the, the uh, Armenia Azerbaijan conflict from a couple years ago and the like. Uh, I will say also there's another precedent to think about here, and that is, I think it was uh, during the Trump administration, uh, Iran uh, shot down a U.S. Global Hawk, which is a very large uh, drone uh, that we use for surveillance. Uh, we were operating from international waters there as well. Sadly, the United States did not respond. President Trump uh, chose to countermand a kinetic response to that clear shoot down of a U.S. aircraft, uh, and as a result, you saw an escalation of Iranian activity in the months that followed that led up to, back and forth, the uh, targeting of Soleimani. And then after that, the, t the firing of Iranian ballistic missiles into uh, Iraq at U.S. bases. So I don't think that this is going to lead to that. But nevertheless, I do think it suggests the need for some kind of firm and clear response on the part of the United States. You know, I, th I think number one is going to be the, the firmness and the clarity uh, with which the United States uh, responds, uh, identifying it. We don't want our own weakness or uh, indecision here to be perceived uh, by the Russians as an encouragement to try something else and test us on something else. Uh, you've had so many statements over the past year uh, about, you know, d defending uh, NATO territory and all these other things. We don't want any kind of uh, in the gray zone kind of activities to further test where exactly that line is. Thank <laughs> you.